Allahu Welcome to our audience that is viewing from home during this lockdown. Um, my name is Kashmir Meriam and this is my sister Aisha. Aisha, would you like to introduce yourself and what we do as the Strangers Organization? Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillahi wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My name is Aisha and I am part of an organization called The Strangers and our goal is to revive the message of Islam and we do this through uh, different different means. One of the means is through spoken word poetry, through the collective voice of Muslim poets around the world um, and just being able to clear up misconceptions. So that's our main goal. Um, yes, Kash. Yeah, excellent. Jazakallah khair. Uh, so the work that we do as the strangers is we host a lot of uh, poetry slams. A lot of the time they're, um, you know, in person. And so we have our poets go up on stage. They compete for trophies um, and prizes. And we just have a good time. It's basically to platform the Muslim voice so that we can portray the true message of Islam through the art of spoken word poetry. Um, so it's a creative art, it's something that is uh, powerful and empowering. Um, and that's what we wanted to do for you today. So we have a great show lined up for you all. Um, we hope that you enjoy watching. Um, and I just wanted to clarify a few things that are a little bit different about uh, slam poetry uh, versus written poetry or any other type of poetry, Shakespeare, whatever, you, whatever type of poetry you are into. Um, so the difference between slam poetry is that it is um, about the content of the poem, so how deep is the lyrical content, how um, how relevant is it to the audience, how how powerful is the 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 methods that are used to articulate what is being said in the poem, and second of all, um, the the powerful thing about slam poetry and probably one of the more important traits of slam poetry is that it is heavily about the way in which the message is revealed to the audience. So it's not just about reading from a sheet of paper, it's about how that message is delivered. Um, so that's something that we put a lot of emphasis on as the strangers and we do uh, with all of our poets as well. So inshallah today you'll be hearing some slam poetry and um, I hope that you enjoy the show and all of the poets that we have lined up. Uh, there are three simple rules that we have for the poets. That is number one, the content has to be um, appropriate. So no curse words. Um, uh, there, there is no inappropriate content um, and our poets do understand that. The second rule is that uh, we have to make sure that the poem is under five minutes. Um, and number three is just to be respectful of everyone that is up there performing. Everyone is sharing something that is meaningful to them and that's something very personal and we have to respect that because that's very sanctified. Um, so yeah, so without any further ado, I would like to introduce our judge for this evening. Her name is Tahani Salah. Is Tahani there? I'm here. As Assalamu alaikum, Tahani. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah, we're doing good. Perfect. So I have Tahani your bio here. I'm just going to read it. And um, hopefully that will explain to everyone your background in poetry. I personally, I know Tahani from before. Um, she's a slam poet. So she knows a thing or two, or more than a thing or two, about performance. And that's one of the reasons we chose to have her on our platform today. Um, and that's something that means a lot to us because I think to be a writer is one thing, but to be a performer is something, um, is something else. So, uh, Jazakallah for joining us today. Thank so, you. Tahani Salah is an educator, poet, and activist based in Brooklyn, New York, with a bloodline to Palestine. She's a graduate of Columbia University, a former professor of curriculum development at the Cooney Graduate Center. She's also a member of the New York Slam team. She competed internationally and holds many slam titles from Europe to Africa. Tahani has also been featured on HBO's Death Poetry Jam. She is passionate about peace and activism and carries that into the classroom as an educator, showing how life creates art and using it all as a tool of expression. As an artist dedicated to bringing light and solutions to communities where people's voices have been silenced, Tahani has performed at a number of world famous stages, including the Apollo Theater in New York City, to universities in the US, South Africa, Germany, Canada, Palestine, Jordan, and many more. <laughs> Mashallah. Okay, so Tahani, you told me to pick one or two lines from your bio, but I felt like everyone needed to hear that. Okay. Um, so welcome. And um, her name is Hala Mariker. 
I hope I pronounced your name properly. I'm sorry if I didn't. Um, so please welcome Sister Hala and please introduce yourself, Sister. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa I hope you can hear me. I'm. I can hear you. Hello? I can hear you. Hello, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Thank you. Okay. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Right. So um, I'm Hala Marikar and I'm 19 years old. Um, I'm from Sri Lanka as well. Um, so I'm also a published poet and I published my uh, debut volume of poetry last year. Uh, it's titled A Thousand Paper Cranes. And what I'm going to read today is actually um, from is actually from my book, but um, uh, it, with a few modifications, inshallah. So um, May I start? Please do. Please do. I can't wait to hear what you have to say, by the way. I'll tell you guys why afterwards, inshallah, but the, the field is yours. Jazakallah <laughs> khair. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Rabbi Zidni Ilma. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh once again. Stories. Do you remember a little boy washed up on the shores of a sea who promised him a better home than his own? Alan Kurdi was his name speak it. Do you remember a little boy sitting still atop an orange chair, bleeding from his forehead, tears leaving solitary tracks on a dust-covered face, eyes haunted? Omran Daknish is his name. Speak it. Their Syria. Tell their story. Do you remember a medic as she nursed her patients back to health with the help of the Lord? Do you remember how she tried to take the wounded to safety and ended up wrapped in her country's flag for a burial shroud, her medic's jacket bloodstained and riddled with bullet holes? Razan Najjar is her name. Speak it. Do you remember a little girl? She is Palestine. Tell her story. Do you remember a little girl who wore new earrings and a toothless smile before the dawn of Eid because she knew not if she'd be alive to celebrate it? What she ate was the leaves off of trees, and in the end it was hunger that killed her, not an airstrike. She's Yemen. Tell her story. Do you know of a girl who should have been, a sister of 17, who nurses a child she bore from those who tore her from her home, her life, her right, her honor? Did you know? Her name is the Rohingya. Say it. Do you know the story of a girl in a hijab who sits in the darkness of a room, strapped to a chair, cut up like a guinea pig, organs harvested, and dimly she wonders about the Great Wall of China, built upon the bodies of thousands of men forgotten. She is Uyghur. She is China. She is Muslim. She is all three. She has every right to be. Know that. Do you hear all their stories? That is all that is left of them because their names have been forgotten, replaced or never given. Do you read all the diaries that are written in paper and ink and blood and tears? Do you remember all the people killed in these holocausts up to 2020? Alan Kurdi, Omran Daknish, Razan Najjar, a thousand stories, a million deaths, a billion losses. How many to mourn them? So don't tell me you are honoring the memory of a 12-year-old girl whose tragedy was immortalized in the pages of her diary. Don't tell me of the horror she underwent at the hands of the Nazi. Don't tell me you are honoring her memory when you are ignoring what she stood for. Don't tell me her story is from the 1940s because if you listen hard enough, it is alive even more so in 2020. Jazakum khair. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Allahumma bari. That was amazing. Thank and you. I had no doubt that it wouldn't be. Uh, the first two poets are definitely setting a standard here, right? Kashmir Tahani, what do you think? MashaAllah, very much so. Very much so. Alhamdulillah. Very powerful. Jazakallah khair. And sister, I just love the fact that you mentioned so many of the um, crises that are going on that a lot of people overlook. For example, what's going on with the Uyghur Muslims? What is going on with the Rohingya Muslims? People forget that these people are actually still going through the difficulties and hardships that we heard about only once in the media. So Jazakallah for mentioning that. And may Allah continue to empower you through your words. And um, it was a pleasure listening to you. Ameen. 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 Assalamu alaikum. I want to thank everyone here. I want to thank primarily uh, for hosting us on their platform every single year when we host this. It's just an amazing success, and I can say alhamdulillah from the bottom of my heart. I think this was phenomenally successful. So, jazakallah khair. I want to say a special jazakallah khair to uh, Tahani for doing this, for doing the very, very difficult job of judging. It can never be. Thank you so much. May Allah reward you and, um, and uh, you know, for taking the time out. You're also a 
single mother. So, you know, it, I know it's difficult juggling uh, duties. So, you know, I will be for that. And um, yeah, do you have any closing remarks, Aisha? Um, I just wanted to say that um, alhamdulillah, 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 may Allah bless all of the viewers for attending. Um, I pray that we all benefited from the event without our poets. Um, now, saying that as well, um, I'm not sure if you can see me. Okay, you can see me now. Um, no further ado, uh, you can find The Strangers on Instagram. Our website is in the works, inshallah. So please do uh, definitely follow up with more information about the Uyghur campaign, uh, which is a current campaign that we're doing. We hope you enjoyed the letter, the final compilation. Um, a lot of heart went into it from our poets. And thank you again to everyone. And of course, Sister Tahani, you did an amazing job. Jazakul khair. Assalamu alaikum and lastly i just want to say the greatest thank you to all of our poets for contributing their pieces it was mind-blowing and touched my heart and i'm sincerely saying that as someone who's been to a lot of poetry slams and had a lot of poetry over the years as tahani and as aisha can both attest to we had an amazing level of talent tonight. Um, so may Allah reward you all. And yeah, I'm going to close it right there. And assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.